This is Kader Sevinc and today we are in the European Parliament. We are going to discuss Turkey-EU relations. We are together with European Parliament Turkey reporter Nacho. Welcome. Thank you, Kader. It's a pleasure. Today we have joint parliamentary committee in the European Parliament after four years. What are your impressions? Well, the first this is good news to resume the works of the joint parliamentary committee that has been suspended for practical and for political reasons, I have to say. But finally, we achieve an agreement on resume the talks. And that could be part of this positive agenda or positive move, mood that we appreciated lately in the relation with Turkey. Uh, as you know, we have asked him for facts, not love letters. And this is a fact. We, we finally uh, had our meeting. We are having our meeting this, uh, this evening. And this is good news because we are talking to each other directly, face to face, and it's, it, it's, it has a very good session. What were the issues on the agenda? Well, we, we start talking this morning about the general framework. We discussed a lot about the accession process and other means to, to, to develop our relation. It's not, of course, the relation between European Union and Turkey is very complex. It's not only about the accession process, but this morning we dedicated the session to the general political framework. And then we start talking about foreign policy and then to democracy and rule of law. And we are going back to the uh, sectoral issues that mean energy, health, and that kind of sectoral policies uh, for, the, for the rest of the, of the session. In, term of, in terms of democracy, because I know human rights issues, fundamental rights are the essence of your report, uh, which is in the, uh, in the process of adopting in the European Parliament. So what are the main issues for you as a rapporteur what are the issues we should expect to see in your well, final report? Well, the first is, uh, what is the content of the, uh, of the, and the, 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 the means of the report is, we have to assess the development of Turkey as a candidate country. That means to examine what, how are the folders, how are the chapters, how are the policies related to the assessment process. Sometimes it seems that the report is a more general and broader approach to the relation, but at the core of the of the substance, substance of the report is the accession process. And at the core of the accession process is human rights and rule of law. Of, of course, there are many other things, but uh, the, the, the big elephant in the room at that very moment, who is uh, stalling the, the, the developments on the, and the negotiation of the accession process, is the bad situation of human rights and rule of law. And for that reason, the Council decided a long time ago to suspend, or to, not to suspend, because it had to be formally suspended, to frozen. Uh, to frozen the accession process, uh, waiting for uh, uh, that Turkey's authorities show a real political will to advance in this uh, folder of uh, human rights and rule of law. Uh, of course, uh, what happened in the year 16, the coup and other, other situations have created a more difficult environment for, for the development of better policies on human rights and rule of law. But uh, the coup happened a long time ago, and yeah. it, I think, uh, there, there were means f long time ago also to come back to normality. And as I say to my uh, colleagues, to the, my colleague parliamentarians to Turkey, every one of them, they live in a different country, in a different Turkey. They enjoyed a, a mature democracy uh, and they enjoy a lot of freedom and liberties. And the problem is what we appreciated from the European Parliament is a backsliding on this chapter and we have to depict it. Uh, for the rest, uh, I have to say that the, the relation is in a better mood now. Uh, we uh, have been able to ease That's a some dramatic tension. change, isn't it? Well, after, the, after the, the easing of the tension in Eastern Mediterranean, mm -hmm. and uh, after some gestures from both sides, after some high-level talks that happened with some visits, not only from the leaders of the European Union institution, but some some uh, prime ministers, uh, they were, uh, we tried and we achieved a, a more conducive uh, uh, environment and this is the result of that. And uh, this is a, 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 a quite uh, a strange issue because part of the report is positive mm -hmm. and the other part uh, dealing with human rights and rule law is not. And, mm -hmm. But this is what 
uh, our tax is about, is to depict uh, what is the situation. And even if we, uh, we are able to, to written cl clearly that there were good news, at the same time there is no major improvement in human, right, human rights and rule of law. You and other EU officials are often referring it as a positive mood or new chapter in EU-Turkey relations. What are the actually issues uh, where there is an opportunity for Turkey-EU relations in the we, near and midterm? Yeah, we start to talk about sectoral issues. That has been good. Health, environment, other sectoral folders. We are talking to, with Turkey about the carbon policies. This is good. Uh, we maintain some European program. This is good in the people-to-people -people contact. And that has been the ground to try to regain trust. I have to say that the, the withdrawal of the, uh, of the drillings of the uh, exploratory vessels is, good, is a good step. The tokens to bilateral tokens to Greece is a good step. Mm -hmm. And we appreciated that at the end, this positive agenda offered by the European Union is, could gain momentum uh, in, this, uh, in this situation. Late, we have the, uh, the alignment of Turkey the substantial alignment of Turkey with the international law and the European Union and the Western world in the Ukrainian-Russia crisis. This is good. This is very mm -hmm. good. And even if Turkey has not aligned completely, mm -hmm. we appreciate it a lot, this uh, stance of Turkey uh, uh, defending uh, the, the sovereignty of, of Ukraine and criticizing plainly the invasion of the country. This is a good mood, but I have to say, we started before to appreciate it, this new environment, more conducive, and this uh, horrible situation of Ukraine mm -hmm. has reaffirmed us uh, the necessity of having Turkey on board uh, of the Western world, defending the, uh, an international relation ruled by the law. And now I'm going to pose a couple of questions. I'm expecting uh, shorter answers like yes and no. Okay. Should we expect the start of a uh, customs union uh, modernization process? I yes, I think in so. In near term. Yes, I think so. Yeah, I think there okay. is the only chapter, the only uh, part of our lesson in, in there we can advance and then to introduce some democratic conditionality during the discussion. Within the framework of customs union yeah, uh, modernization, yes. that's great. And should we expect Turkey's inclusion in PESCO, for example? I think this, what is happening now, mm -hmm. is could be a good ground to start building on that. But mm -hmm. we have to recognize that in the last year we have several difficulties because because Libya, because Syria, because the S400, because to come back to this two-state solution in Cyprus, uh, well, this is not the, the better ground, but I, we have to recognize some, some positive grounds on Ukraine and Russia and on, uh, on the resuming of the talks to Armenia. This is good mm -hmm. to come back uh, for a more aligned uh, foreign policy of Turkey uh, with the European Union. Of course, Turkey is a candidate country. It's mm -hmm. a sovereign country. Mm -hmm. It's not obliged to follow a step-by-step -step European Union foreign policies. But what we expect from any candidate is to a progressive alignment of the policies. Now, uh, with this situation in Russia, Ukraine, I thing we have more means to have uh, Turkey on board even in our uh, foreign uh, sorry security and defense policies this new momentum and the new convergence uh, in foreign policy between Turkey and EU is very very interesting should we also expect uh, any good news about uh, visa liberalization what well, no not at that stage because mm -hmm. we didn't appreciate any political will to conduct the reforms that are uh, that are lacking in mm -hmm. this fall, mm -hmm. mainly the anti-terror law and sure. data protection law. And for the moment, we didn't appreciate it that the government has launched or has sent to the parliament uh, the relevant draft uh, dealing with this. This is very important for the people-to-people mm -hmm. -people contact. Mm -hmm. We would like really exactly. to have a visa liberalization, but we, uh, being a normative uh, procedure, uh, Turkey has to comply with the, with the benchmark. As a final question, because this is a very important uh, issue for people-to-people uh, -people contact and for Turkish people, because especially for youth, you know, for the exchange programs, for the, to visit a European country, European Union member country, it's very important and they are really struggling. Uh, the visa requirements are terribly, uh, terribly high and the implementation is not that promising. As you know, you know, you, you pay, uh, often uh, you visit Turkey, pay visits, official visits or unofficial visits to Turkey. What's your message uh, to the youth of Turkey? 
Turkey actually uh, as the new and, and yes. I know that you adopted this approach as well. well I'll try to. I'll try. <laughs> it's not easy because you know we have been for a long time using exactly, Turkey. Exactly. Exactly. I would like really to use Turkey. What's your message to the well, youth my message, of Turkey? My message to the to the youth of Turkey is that they could. Uh, look into the European Union as a society, as a, as a set of values and principles. Uh, we can offer to them uh, the best way to conduct her project of life. I think democracy is about to allow to anyone uh, to pursue the, the, the projects of life, whatever is your condition, whatever is your economical condition, your social condition, your ideology, your religion, your uh, sexual preferences. Uh, democracy offers you a path to develop your personality and to, to struggle for your project of life. And this is what we offer to the Turkish youth uh, as we receive uh, being a, a relatively youth member of the European Union, Spain. And we had this idea of coming to Europe to build a, a stronger democracy in our country. It's the same for, the, for Turkey and for the youth of Turkey. Turkey, thank, sorry. Turkey, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Pleasure, Kader.